If we look at a converging nozzle bolted onto a fire hose or a pipe, then the pressure here will be higher than atmospheric pressure, driving the flow to accelerate through the nozzle and out through the end here to location two. So in this example, the diameter of the pipe or the hose is 10 centimeters. The diameter of the nozzle exit is 3 centimeters. So the fluid is accelerating considerably. We can calculate the areas at the two locations. The area here is about one-tenth of the area here, meaning that the velocity here will be about 10 times what the velocity was here. If we know that the pressure inside here at location 1 is 10 bar, and the pressure out here is atmospheric, that's zero gauge, we can then do some calculations. We'll assume that the density is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter for water. So Bernoulli's equation, once we simplify, no elevation term, the differences in the velocity squared divided by 2g must be equal to the difference in the pressure divided by rho g. Continuity tells us that the mass flow at one rho 1 v1 a1 must be equal to rho 2 v2 a2 because the flow is incompressible and steady. The velocities are related to each other v1 and v2 by the area ratio and thus if we substitute that information back into here we can get this arrangement for Bernoulli's equation. Simplifying that we get v2 and in this case, for 10 bar there, V2 is about 45 meters per second. And V1 is about 4 meters per second. So, different by a factor of about 10. And as a result, they're going to have uh, effects on Bernoulli's equation different by a factor of about 100. M.1 equal to M.2 equal to rho V1 A1. 31.7 kilograms per second. We really should get the same answer if we calculated rho V2A2, and we would. So, if instead of having a nozzle on there, we just had a blind end on the flange there, we'd find that the force in the bolts would be pressure times area, or 7850 newtons. If we apply the momentum equation to figure out what the force actually acting is using the gauge pressure for our datum so that there's no pressure force on the outsides of the nozzle, then the total force acting on the fluid, P1A1, there's a force acting here, pressure over the area, minus the bolt force acting in this direction, that's the forces acting on the fluid in the control volume, must be equal to m dot u out minus m dot u in. The fluid going out must be going faster than the fluid coming in if there's a net positive force in the positive x direction. So m dot times capital V2, the total velocity of the flow moving here, minus m dot times capital V1, the total velocity of the flow coming in there. And if we take all of those, we know what the pressure is, 10 bar, we know what the area is, we can take that to the other side. The only unknown is the bolting force. We can calculate that bolting force, substituting in, and we find that it's 6,555 newtons, a little bit lower than the 7,850 that we'd have if we had a blind flange across that, uh, the end of that pipe. So it's a little bit lower. And we get all of this without needing to know all the details of what's going on inside the nozzle here. Because all that's important is the difference between the momentum coming in, the momentum going out, and the forces applied. If we tried to tackle this problem in a little more complicated way, we could do it the hard way and do a balance just on the nozzle and ignore the flow. So if we had the nozzle like this, it's got bolting force there and bolting force there, and it's got pressure forces applied all along here. And if we use gauge pressure, there's no pressure force anywhere else. So what we see is that the pressure starts out like this, 
and it drops off sharply just in the last little bit as the fluid's accelerating because of that v squared over 2g term. So the diameter is 10 centimeters minus, if it's 20 centimeters long, 7 over 20 times x, where x is this dimension, so that when x gets to be 20, it'll be 10 minus 7 is 3 centimeters in diameter. Area is pi d squared over 4. Velocity is q over a, or v1, a1 over a. So as we go along here, depending on what the area is at each step of the way, we can calculate what the velocity is. The pressure at each location will be p1 minus a term related to what the velocity is just locally compared to the velocity uh, at the inlet at 1. And if we follow that through, we'll get a relationship like this. If we want to know the x forces acting, we'll have to integrate that pressure over the projected area, dAx, to get the component that's acting in the x direction. And doing that analysis could get a little ugly with these fairly complex relationships for the pressure. I would go numerically with this. It would be even tougher if we had a more complicated diameter structure, if the nozzle wasn't just conical, but if it perhaps had a geometry something more like this, which is more what I might expect of the interior cross-sectional area of that nozzle.